Francesky. She's defending her, her extended proposal today. This is part of this four part sequence, four hurdle sequence. We have the qualifying papers, the candidacy papers, the extended proposal, and the dissertation defense. So the idea today is that she's presenting the, her claims, the detailed claims, the contribution, the methodology, <coughs> the, and the work plan, and the deliverable. And if, we're all, if the committee is all on base, this is essentially, intuitively, kind of like a contract. If she finishes all this, then we agree to approve her dissertation. So this is a critical point. And we want to make sure that we have the, the discussion, particularly of the methodology and the deliverables. So I've asked her, because we don't, we, uh, Professor Zanakis has to leave at 11.30, I want to make sure we have the, 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 the good discussion about the the methodology and so forth. So I've asked her, she's done a fine job of, of the background literature and so forth, the full 50 pages in her, in her XP document. And I've asked her to summarize that in a mere 15 minutes so that she gets on to the, the uh, methodology and the deliverables where I think we'll probably have the most discussion today. Okay, Catherine, I, it's, it's all yours. While she's presenting, the, the overall protocol here is that we try to keep it down to clarification questions during the presentation, but if necessary, we enter into the, the uh, discussion questions. The, there's, we have discussion with Catherine, and then at, after that, then we have a closed discussion with just the committee members. So Catherine and uh, the other guests are asked to leave. And then we ask her to take the walk and then she has <laughs> time out in the hallway. Catherine, it's all yours. Okay, hi, good morning. Um, so I'm going to be talking today about my proposal, my dissertation proposal, about group presence in virtual worlds, supporting collaborative e learning. Uh, the outline of my presentation is uh, I'm going to start with a brief summary of the background, then I'm going to go into the research plan, the contribution, and the research methodology. Finally, the deliverables and time frame for those deliverables. Uh, I'm going to start with the one of the topics, which is experiential learning. Experiential learning refers, refers to the use of learning methodologies which actively engage students in experience, says that will generate knowledge through discoveries and experiments. In experimental learning, the learning process is through the student's engagement, through a student's active immersion in the activity. Uh, and they reflect upon the, those activities. In traditional learning, the learning process is more passive, where it, it, it's through lectures and conferences. And it has been shown through research that experiential learning is very successful in the learning process. Uh, and the key to its success is the active involvement of the students in that learning process, resulting in the, from the combination of the student's personal view of the world with the group uh, view and interaction. Uh, also, another point with regarding experiential learning is that it has been found that uh, experiential learning is very is vital for other other learners, especially those that are returning to school, and for learners from uh, minorities, uh, which is actually the group that e-learning targets more generally. So uh, that's why I, this is very important to be incorporated into uh, e-learning or rituals. Uh, e-learning commonly refers to the use of uh, internet-enabled uh, learning and the use of computer technologies to create, encourage, support, and facilitate learning, learning anytime and anywhere. The goal of e-learning or the goal of using computers uh, to for learning is that to it to assist in the delivery of individual learning and comprehensive learning. The rapid development of technological adva advancements, the growth of the internet, the proliferation of globalization efforts, and the associated changes in all areas of knowledge have coupled with the uh, ability of individualizing uh, learning has uh, caused learning to become a very important medium for learning and training in the workplace. Uh, Again, in this case, uh, the main audience is other learners, which through ex research and experiential learning has been shown that uh, that's one of the best techniques to transfer the knowledge or 
for the learning uh, experience to be more successful in that particular group of users. A virtual learning environment is the software that is used to create and to offer online courses or e-learning based is essentially a website or an equivalent network learning structure that provides a number of basic functions that are valuable in the learning process. Uh, the functions that are included here uh, include the commu communication among team members and also one of the things that have made them very popular is the ability for the users, for the both learners and instructors to administer the task of the learning process. And also, like I mentioned, the communication and they have been uh, used and they, they are capable of fostering the emergence of communities, uh, communi communities of learn, uh, knowledge within the learning environment. But current virtual learning environments are lacking in the support that for collaborative e-learning because they are more focused on the individualized learning and they provide the tools, all the necessary tools to support individualized learning but when it comes to, su to support collaborative learning they uh, lack uh, that, uh, those elements. Uh, virtual worlds uh, are the, a set of computer rendered images that compromise a simulated 3D environment in which users have a spatial sense while interacting with it through the use of avatars. These are 3D environments. They are becoming very popular nowadays. The, mo the most common use of these virtual of these environments are games, so uh, games-oriented virtual worlds in which the design follows a particular theme and the user is there basically to uh, entertain themselves. But this game, this virtual games, sorry, virtual worlds with game purposes have been very successful in engaging student, uh, sorry, participants and making them so engaged to the point of addiction because of this, all, this, all the features that these virtual worlds have and the, they have been uh, very good in fostering communities of users within those uh, virtual worlds. Yeah. Yes. And then the first point is that 3D environments, but it's not just interacting with it, it's interacting with, with the others, others. Yes. With the yes. others the, their representation. The representation. It's not just interacting with the environment, we're interacting with the environment and other users that are in that environment. Open culture virtual worlds uh, <coughs> came out of the game-oriented virtual world when this one, uh, the user had a set of tools that give them free uh, power for personalizing their experience. They give them a lot of tools to express themselves creatively and are being used also for the emergence or actually fostering communities of uh, users that share a common interest in this, uh, in the real world, they translate to the uh, virtual world. The tendency nowadays is to move to a 3D environment. There are projects going on like uh, the Procreate project and the other one is 3D web project, which are moving towards the development of a three-dimensional uh, virtual web. So this is the tendency to incorporate this element it, in order to engage more, to engage the user more, in order to involve the user in this type of experiences. Businesses have noticed virtual worlds, have noticed their potential and are tapping into that by create, establishing their presence in different types of virtual worlds. Some companies like Coca-Cola created their own virtual worlds and also MTV also have their own virtual worlds. Others have just used established virtual worlds to develop some type of presence in these virtual worlds. Also, educators have realized that this technology has a lot of potential, but they're still trying to figure out that how can they tap into that potential. They are mostly using it as a virtual uh, setting for giving virtual conferences. The use of collaboration among students is still not part of those endeavors in 
from ed education in virtual environment. Uh, just so that you can get a quick feeling of what virtual walls are, I have a link here that goes to a little video of how a virtual walls work. <coughs> 